Okay, so here's a diagram of an atom. It's not perfectly accurate, but for what we need it for right now, it's going to be just fine. So in this video, we're going to talk about the characteristics of an atom. Um, things that we can use to describe, it, describe atoms like this one here. Now, if someone asks you to describe a person, um, you might use characteristics like the colour of their hair or the colour of their eyes, what their height is, and things like that. So just like that, there are characteristics we can use to describe an atom. The first of these characteristics, and the most important of these, is the atomic number. Now I've got the atomic number here, and the atomic number is represented by a capital Z. Alright? Um, and what the atomic number is, is the number of protons and neutrons, or the number of protons in an atom. So now in this di diagram you can see that um, I've got my nucleus and my protons are actually being represented by um, the red dot. So if I want to find out what my atomic number is, I just need to count up the protons. And I've got one, two, three. So three protons means I have an atomic number of three. Um, now atomic number is super important because the number of protons in an atom tell us what kind of atom it is, what element it is. Um, and what I might, might mean by this is, um, is it a carbon atom, an oxygen atom, is it a sodium atom? Um, and we'll talk about that in later videos. All right? The next important characteristic of an atom is the mass number. All right? And the mass number is often represented by a capital A. And now people always get confused about the mass number um, because the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons and, and people get confused because you know the atomic number is the number of protons and people want the mass number to be the number of neutrons but it's not all right the mass number is the number of neutrons and protons inside the nucleus of an atom um, and there's not really anything that describes the number of neutrons in an atom. It's just not used that often. Anyway, for the mass number, we want to count up the number of protons and neutrons inside our atom. So we've got one, two, three protons, four, five, six, seven. All right, so our mass number for this atom is seven. Now, finally, the last characteristic of an atom is the most complex and it's called net charge. And I don't really have a good way to describe or a, a, good, way, a good definition for net charge. So we're just going to say it's how protons and electrons balance each other out. So let's talk more about this. So Net charge is about how protons and electrons balance each other out. Um, so net charge, um, so, so protons we know have a positive charge and electrons we know have a negative charge. So that means if we have the same number of protons and electrons in an atom um, like we have right here, all right, um, and I'm not drawing the electrons in here, uh, the neutrons in here, because we're just not worrying about them at the moment. All right. We have, if we have a look here, we have the same number of electrons, three electrons, and the same number of protons, three protons. Um, so this gives us three minus and a three positive. Um, so we're going to end up with an atom that has a net charge of zero. So net charge of zero. And we call this atom neutral, all right? So, you know, we spoke about that in the last video, neutral, um, meaning that it doesn't have a charge, all right? Now, what would happen um, if an atom um, we had had four protons and three electrons? So let's bring that one in here. So what we have here, if I've got four protons, three electrons, all right, so we don't have the same number of electrons and protons anymore. So they can't totally balance each other out. So instead we have more protons than electrons. So we're going to have a net charge um, that's positive because there's going to be 
um, some of this positive charge in the protons that can't be balanced out by the electrons. So in this case, we have one more proton um, than electron. So this is going to give us a net charge of plus one. So I've got four pluses and only three minuses, which leaves me with one plus. So we have a net charge of plus one. And since the atom has a net charge, we give it a special name, all right? And this name, we call it an ion, all right? So any atom that has a net, has a net charge, that's so not neutral, any atom that has a charge, um, we classes, well, we call it as an ion. So we've got net charge of zero being neutral, any atom with a charge, we have, um, we call it an ion. Now, you know, what would happen um, if I had five protons and five protons and three electrons? So we've got this little one here, five protons, three electrons, what's going to happen? Um, well, I've got two more protons, so I've got five pluses and three minuses. So that's going to leave me with two plus, all right? So two plus, which means I have a net charge of plus two, all right? And again, we will call this an ion. Because this has got a net charge, all right, it doesn't matter whether the net charge is a plus or a minus, all right, we call that an ion. So the things can happen, this can happen in, in reverse, it can happen the other way. So what's going to happen if our, our atom actually has more electrons and protons? So in this one here, you know, we've got, um, sorry, got to bring that in, neutral. All right, well, we've got this one here, we've got four electrons, three protons. So I've got four minus and only three plus, which means I'm going to have a net charge of one minus. So I've got one more minus than the plus, so I'm going to have a net charge of one minus. And again, we call that an ion. So anything with a charge, doesn't matter whether it's negative or it's positive, right, we call that an ion. Now, what's going to happen when I've got five electrons and three protons? All right, same sort of thing again. I've got one, two, three protons. I've got the one, two, three, four. I've got five electrons. All right, so I've only got three pluses and I've got two minuses. So that's going to give me a net charge of minus two. So I've got two more minuses than I have pluses. All right, so that gives me a net charge of minus two. And again, we call this an ion. Anything with, uh, anything with a, a charge, whether it be negative or minus, we call an ion. So what's going to be the charge of this atom here? All right. So let's have a look at it. So we've got one, two, three, four electrons. So four electrons. And I've got one, two, three protons. So three protons. All right, so I've got four electrons, and electrons are minus, and I've got three protons, which are plus. So I've got four, four um, minuses, three plus. I've got one more electron than proton. So that's going to give me a net charge of minus one. All right, so my net charge for this atom is minus one. So just to recap some of the things in this video, the characteristics for um, an atom, some of the ways that we can describe them, we can use uh, atomic mass number, um, and which can often be written as a, a capital Z to represent where it would go. Um, and the atomic number is the number of protons within the atom. Um, if the number of protons changes within ad the atom, it changes the type of atom it is. Um, we have mass number, which is represented by a capital A. And, you know, it is the number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, not just the neutrons, all right? So there's no uh, characteristic for just describing the neutrons. The mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. Um, and then we have net charge. So how protons and electrons balance each other out. A um, couple more terms that we did use in this one. Um, neutral, so neutral just means that it doesn't have a charge. All right, it is uh, just as it says, it's neutral. There's no plus, there's no minus. It's neutral, it sits in the middle. All right, it's uh, Switzerland. And our other term was ion. 
So any atom that has a charge, so it has an imbalance of protons and electrons, all right, so it's got more of one than the other, any atom that has that, we class that as an ion. So again, nothing to um, read out of the book with this video. Uh, no questions to do with this. We've got a couple more videos before we get to that, and then we'll do a short quiz so we can move on. So see you in the next one.